Naam, ala siri njema mtazamaji ni tumaini letu kwamba ubuheri wa afya. Karibu sana kwa taarifa za mbiu ya KTN. Tukuarifu na taarifa ambazo zinazidi kugonga vicha vya habari. Jina langu ni Zubeida Kananu. Na tunaanza na taarifa kuhusu pigo ambalo amelipata ame uh, naibu Rais Rigathi Gashagwa baada ya jaji wa mahakama kuu Chacha Mwita kutoa uamuzi ambao umeelekeza kwamba amekataa dile ombi ambalo lilikuwa limewasilishwa na naibu Rais Rigathi Gashagwa akitaka bunge la seneti kuzuiwa kuendelea na mchakato wa kumondoa mamlakani hadi jopo la majaji watatu ambalo lilibuniwa na jaji mkuu Martha Kome lisikize na kuamua kesi takriban 26 ambazo ziliwasilishwa kwake eh, mahakamani kuhusiana na kutimuliwa mamlakani eh, kwa naibu Rais Rigathi Gashagwa jaji Chacha Mwita akinukuu kipengee 145 cha katiba ambacho kinatoa mwelekeo eh, kuhusu kuondolewa mamlakani kwa rais na naibu rais akisema mihimili mitatu ya serikali ni huru na haiwezi kuingiliwa mradi tu katiba iheshimiwe na kufuatwa namna ambavyo inaelekezwa akisema japo jopo lile limebuniwa kusikiza kesi zilizowasilishwa mahakamani yeye kama jaji au mahakama haiwezi kuingilia mchakato ambao kikatiba unaruhusiwa wa kumondoa mamlakani naibu rais au rais chini ya kipengee 145 na hivyo kuruhusu bunge la seneti kuendelea na mchakato huo bunge la seneti Neti limeratibu shughuli hiyo kufanyika kesho siku ya Jumatano na Alhamisi uh, kusikiza um, hoja zilizowasilishwa na mashtaka ambayo yamewekwa dhidi ya naibu rais ambayo ni takriban moja tunakumbuka siku ya Jumane wiki jana bunge la taifa lilipitisha hoja ya kumondoa mamlakani naibu rais Rigathi Gashagwa na sasa hivi tunasubiri kwa hamu kusikia bunge la seneti litaamua vipi mawakili wa naibu rais Rigathi Gashagwa waliorodhesha baadhi ya mambo uh, ikiwemo iwa hapo uh, idadi inayohitajika kikatiba ili afikiwe wakati wa kumchunguza ama kuwahusisha uh, umma kuhusiana na kesi hiyo au hoja zinazohusishwa uh, na naibu rais Rigathi Gashagwa vile vile iwapo atapata haki na vile vile swala jingine ambalo uh, liliibuliwa ni kuhusu iwapo uh, maswala ambayo yaliletwa katika bunge la taifa ni yale aliyokuwa yameorodheshwa kwenye hoja ya kumondoa mamlakani tumsikize there is a further argument that Constitutional imperatives on public participation were not complied with. The petitioner has given a, an example of Keio South constituency, serial number 95, to demonstrate this fact. According to the, to the results of, for public participation in that constituency, the total number of people who were participated was given as 43. Those who supported were 70. Those who did not support were 3. The percentage of those who supported was 162.79 percent, while the percentage of those who did not support was 6.93, 6.98. It is implausible that an attendance of 43 people would produce 70 people in support, that's 162 percent, and three people in opposition. The petitioner has raised valid concerns. However, presidents bind this court so that although the constitution grants the court jurisdiction to intervene where there is a threat to violate the constitution or human rights and fundamental freedom, the court must exercise restraint in matters of impeachment. This process has been committed to the parliament, which must be allowed to conclude its path. It is in our constitutional scheme, The people delegated the authority to state organs, including parliament and the judiciary, to exercise their dele the delegated authority only in accordance with the constitution. Article 2 reminds everyone that the constitution is the supreme, is supreme and binds all persons and state organs at both level. While Article 3 places an obligation on every person to respect, uphold, and defend the constitution. <coughs> Article 10 sub Article 1 also is clear. That the national values and principles bind all state organs, public officers, and all persons whenever they discharge their mandate under the Constitution. National values and principles include transparency, accountability, the rule of law, and public participation, and as, as well as human rights. If a state organ fails to abide by any of the values and principles in the Constitution, The court exercising its mandate under Article 165, Article 3, 
will come in and investigate whether anything said to have been done under the authority of the constitution is inconsistent with or in convention of the constitution. It was in this respect the Supreme Court stated in one in a matter case that it would be reluctant to question parliamentary procedures as long as they did not breach the constitution and that the mandate of the court is, to, is restricted to the doctrine of separation of powers to deciding on matters of individual rights and the fundamental freedom. The Supreme Court then stated that in the exercise of their wide political powers, both the county, read National Assembly, and the Senate cannot act out of the confines of the Constitution and the law. For to do so would invariably invite the court's intervention, end of quote. In other words, the constitutional processes are to be are not about a dash to the finish line. They have constitutional imperatives that must be complied with, and if not, such infractions will not be out of reach of our constitution. The timelines given in the constitution are on the promise, on the premise that its processes will be complied with, will comply with the constitutional requirements. Where there is an allegation that the constitutional imperatives have not been complied with, the, if the affected person has recourse to the courts, and the courts will rise to the occasion and consider whether state or, the state organ complied with the constitution or the law. In that respect, ours is a constitution of hope and promise that institutions established under the constitution will comply with its fundamental principles. <coughs> And the promise that the constitution is supreme and any act or omission in contravention of the constitution is invalid. In other words, it does not matter how far the process may have gone since no action is out of reach of our constitution. This is what Lord Henning had in mind when he stated many years back that in act, in, if an act is void, then it is in law and nullity. It is not only bad, but incurably bad. There is no need for an order to set it aside. It is automatically null and void without more ado, though it is sometimes convenient to have the court declare it to be so. And every proceeding which is founded on it is also bad and incurably bad. You cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stay there. It will collapse. At Court 2, Sabbath Call 4 of our Constitution is not only the hope, but also the promise of our Constitution that we must abide by the constitutional dictates for any act or omission in contravention of the Constitution is invalid. In that respect, I conclude this matter, and this, this is what I say. Having considered the application and the argument by parties, the Constitution and the President the prayer for grant of conservatory order is declined. However, in view of the issues raised in this petition, which also appear to lead to those in petition E522 of, of 2024, which has been certified for purpose of appointing a bench of an even number of judges to hear, I certify this petition as raising substantial questions of law and of public interest in terms of Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution. This file is to be placed before the Honorable Chief Justice to consider appointing an uneven number of judges to hear this petition. Given the close proximity of the issues in this petition and those in petition E522, the Honorable Chief Justice may consider whether this petition may be heard by the same bench appointed to hear petition E522. I make no orders on course. Thank you. Na tutazidi kufatilia tarifa hii na kukuletea.